Welcome to our Investing 101 video series. This session covers the basic concepts of investing. For basic concepts, we are referring to return, risk, diversification, correlation, and how these terms fit together for the overall science and art of portfolio construction. Let's start by talking about return. One of the most important measures that every client has to determine is what their target rate of return is. In other words, how much they expect their portfolio to grow each year. Now this target rate of return will be determined by the asset allocation for each individual investor. In this particular example, the asset allocation shown here has an expected target rate of return of 6%, meaning that the portfolio should grow on average by 6% each year. Not surprisingly, different rates of return will equate to different final portfolio values. In this example, we've shown the growth of a $100,000 portfolio over 40 years. We've shown the growth under a 5% return scenario in the blue and a 7% return scenario in the green. What's important to notice that over time, these returns compound. After 40 years, a 5% annual growth would result in a portfolio value of about $670,000. However, a 7% annual return equates to a portfolio value of almost $1.4 million, which is 110% larger than the $670,000. Therefore, return is especially important because it ultimately determines the final value of any portfolio. Of course, there is more to the portfolio analysis story than just return. We also have to talk about risk. Risk, a very basic measure of risk, is how much an investor could stand to lose under any certain scenario. The primary measure of risk is standard deviation, or the deviation from the expected return of the asset class or the portfolio. In this particular example, the mean is the expected return of 7%. The standard deviation is 9%. So one standard deviation above the mean would be 7 plus 9%, 16%. One standard deviation below the mean would be negative 2%. Investors must balance the upside potential of standard deviation alongside the downside potential of standard deviation. In this example, a return to standard deviations over the mean would be very accretive to portfolio values as that would suggest a return of 25%. However, the opposite is absolutely true as well. A return of two standard deviations below the mean would be a loss of 11% and damaging to a lot of investors. Different asset classes have different expected means and standard deviations. The ultimate trade-off in any investing decision is the risk versus return. If you want to pursue more return and achieve more return out of your portfolio, you need to take on more risk. The classic example is stocks versus bonds. Stocks on average have higher expected returns than bonds, but of course they also have higher expected standard deviation or risk than bonds. Of course, any portfolio is not going to be allocated 100% to just stocks or bonds, and it really becomes an asset allocation decision of balancing different asset classes that are not perfectly correlated. This is known as diversification. Diversification helps offset risk in portfolios because in any given market environment, some asset classes are likely to go up in value, others are to go down. Investors will pursue a certain degree of diversification depending upon their ultimate return goal as well as their risk tolerance. The primary measure by which to measure diversification effects is looking at the correlation or how much asset classes move in conjunction with each other. The results of correlation or correlation analysis is typically shown in a table like you have here. Here we have three very basic asset classes which tend to be mainstays in every institutional portfolio, fixed income, non-US equity, and US equity. We look at the correlation between each one of these asset classes. So for example, if we look at fixed income, the first row going across in this table, and then compare it to non-US equity and US equity, we see that the correlation between non-US equity and fixed income is 0.2 or 20%. So for any given move in fixed income, non-US equities are likely to rise about 20% as much as the fixed income assets values have risen. And then similarly for US equities, they also have a correlation of 0.2. So again, if fixed income moves, US equities it will move at about 20% as much as fixed income does. It's typical to have correlation values between one and negative one. Negatively correlated asset classes will move in opposite directions and that's the most powerful element of diversification. 
Positively correlated asset classes will move in the same direction. However, the lower the magnitude, the less similar the moves will be as asset classes go up in value or go down in value. Ultimately, investors must put together the measures of return, risk, also known as standard deviation, and correlation to produce a portfolio that will help achieve their target rate of return as well as their target rate of risk. What we've shown here in this graph is return on the vertical axis and risk in the horizontal axis. Getting back to the issue of risk versus return, in order to get more return, you need to take more risk. You'll see that all the way up on the right-hand side is emerging markets equity. Of all the asset classes shown here, they offer the highest amount of return, but also the highest amount of risk. Now, the opposite side of that story is on the lower left-hand side, core bonds. They offer the lowest amount of return, but also the lowest amount of risk. A mathematical formula will be used to establish this efficient frontier, which shows the dotted line, the dotted curved line in the graph. And the investor will choose the point on that dotted line, which satisfies their risk and return goal. And this efficient frontier is mathematically determined the mix of all these different asset classes, which offer the optimal return, risk, and correlation to achieve this goal. This is what we spend the most time with our clients on is deciding what that optimal mix of asset classes is to achieve their goals. This marks the conclusion of our basic concepts portion of the Investing 101 series. We encourage you to listen to the other videos that are part of the series to build out further education for investments.